Hi, Coastal Oaks Church family. Uh, Pastor Andy coming to you here today with a special treat. Uh, you might see on the screen here with me. Uh, maybe you know these folks, maybe you don't. This is Kevin and Michelle Kennedy, and we have uh, sponsored them as a church. We've partnered with them in uh, their mission endeavors for going on 10 years now. Something like Nine that. years, probably. Uh, and the work that they're doing in Thailand. And so we're going to take this opportunity just to record some video and uh, help you get to know them as we continue to be a church that sponsors them in their work. So uh, good to have you guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just to clear up, Kevin is in Texas with me tonight. Texas on the wall behind me. Michelle is in Thailand. It's 8 o'clock p.m. for Kevin and I. It's 8 a.m for Michelle on Monday morning. So Correct. Michelle for making time for us today. We appreciate it. Appreciate you, Andy. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Yeah, man. So let's do this. Let's just start with some basic intro information. Why don't you guys, uh, one of you take a, a few minutes and just uh, introduce us as a church to the Kennedy family. I'll let you lead Michelle. Oh, um, okay. We, um, started attending Coastal Oaks, I think it was 1995 probably. Um, we didn't have kids yet. Um, we were there for a few years and then we left for a job five years. Uh, so we were gone for about five years. And then when we came back, we had kids with us. <laughs> and um, we really plugged into the church there at Coastal and we did lots of, lots of different stuff. Anywhere you could serve, we served. And um, we became the first mission team leaders, I guess you could say that. Nice. nice. And so um, what I'm going to do, I'll go back and do a little editing on this video and I'll try to find a semi recent picture of your family, but okay. there's four of you guys total, right? So there's Kevin, yes. Ed, there's Michelle, there's Ray Ann, and, uh, and then JC is the youngest, but he's, you know, a senior in high school these days, right? Correct. Yeah. Right. Nice. But when you guys went on the mission field, it was your family didn't look like that, right? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah, they were, kids were five and seven. Wow, nice, nice. Uh, so let's talk about that for a minute. Let's talk about the uh, process of being called or transitioning to the mission field. Um, how did that? How did that work for you guys? How did it? Uh, I'm sure it wasn't just one conversation. It was probably several. Um, maybe some intense fellowship type conversations even. <laughs> um, but so let's talk about that. How, so people can get, get to know that part of your story. How did uh, the process of being called work for you and then the transition to being, you know, quote, in the field? Well, for me, I was actually saved at nine years old and was called to missions at a young age. Uh, but I walked away from the Lord for a while and rededicated my life actually at Coastal Oaks in 1997. Uh, after the rededication, it was like a fire burning. I was just knew that I was going to be in the mission field somewhere, some way, somehow. And I didn't know when or where, but I, uh, I assumed it would be Mexico. So it was nice and close to Texas. Um, <laughs> but that didn't turn out to be the case. Um, <laughs> and, uh, Michelle's had a little bit different journey. So I'll let her explain hers. Uh -huh. Okay. When we, um, when we became mission team leaders, I thought, um, I'm ready to do this. I can do this. And I was ready to do local ministries, help out with the, all the local stuff we did there every year and start a few new things, maybe do some mission work in America, you know, and then right away we were asked to go to Thailand on a vision trip to learn how to lead other teams. And, oh, we were very apprehensive because we didn't have a clue about going, um, oh God, the God provided and, we, um, we were able to go. It was a five-day quick trip. Um, they had us do everything on that five days so we could teach the team how to do it. And I fell in love with it. I On the way home, I was like, let's go get the kids and come back. Um, <laughs> it took a couple years in the process to, to make that happen, but we went through the IMB process. And a few years later, two years later, we were there. We were on the field working with that same project, Southern Cross Project. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so let's, let's rewind a little bit. You guys are in a, um, a space now as far as your, your calling, the work that you're doing in the mission field, that's different from where you started, correct? Correct. So why don't you talk about kind of the roots of where it started 
and then maybe let's transition that to discuss your current ministry calling your, you know, the, the work that you're doing now. Okay. So we, uh, when we went to Southern Cross Project in 2006 was the first time we met them. And, and uh, that's when Michelle felt her call immediately and uh, was ready to just step right out. Um, before then, it was always, you know, I'm going to be obedient to, to this guy because I know he's called. Um, so, but, you know, that's not really how it works. The calling has to be for the whole family. Uh, and we even made sure that our kids had prayed about it as well. And so, and we were fortunate. They were able to go over the summer before uh, we went full time. So in 2008, during the summer, they got to come and they got to see what they were going to be a part of. And they were just, they were overblown and overwhelmed with it as well. Um, they loved it. And so they were happy to be a part of what was going to be going on. And that was really helpful as the years went on, because whenever things got rough, we could just say, what are we called to do? Yeah. And you can go back to your calling. Yeah. So um, we uh, were working with this uh, Southern Cross Project, and that's a project that hands out Bibles to Chinese tourists. Uh, but you can't spend all day doing that. So we um, were also helping other uh, mis ministries in the city, mostly dealing with uh, trafficking of individuals from children uh, up to adults and uh, bar girls and, um, and just the whole nine yards from the sex trade on down. And so uh, we got to work three years as, as a term, the longest term you can do uh, at that time for us. And so we finished that up. And we just felt like we we're supposed to continue on. But um, now instead of working with Southern Cross Project, we were going to come back and help missionaries stay in the field um, because we had several friends that were on the edge of burnout. Mm -hmm. And um, we just felt like uh, having teams come over is a great help and stuff like that. But sometimes it's also a lot of work. Yeah. And so um, we felt like we could come back and just help them. Uh, and we also were able to help land new people, which we didn't really plan on doing uh, when we first thought about that. But it naturally fit when we got back there. Almost immediately, within a month, there were two new ministries that were starting in the city, and we were able to help them both get rolling. Nice. So, uh, so then we did that for three more years in Patia. And then Rayanne and JC were kind of uh, just at a transition point, and I think Michelle was as well. Uh, she was tired of homeschooling, and they were getting to a point in homeschooling where it was going to become a lot more difficult, uh, hitting the junior high and high school years. And uh, so um, we didn't really plan on it, but um, the Lord called us to Chiang Mai, and we really couldn't believe it because Chiang Mai has got a lot of missionaries. It's the jumping off point for the 10, seven, excuse me, 1040 window, and which if you don't know what that is, that's 70% of the world's population is right there in that longitude and latitude area so um anyway so yeah because of the kids we wound up moving to chiang mai we had no idea <laughs> what we were going to do in chiang mai uh it's about 12 hours north of where we were in patia and so it was a long ways away um but uh, god made it abundantly clear that that's where we we're supposed to go and then within two months michelle uh, was a looking and it just happened to circumstances were right. <laughs> coming in and right. coincidence and all this kind of stuff. And next thing you know, she is uh, working as a volunteer at Grace International School as an elementary office aide. And it really should have just said Michelle Kennedy's job on the title uh, for that job because <laughs> it literally fit her they to were a T. For her, they just didn't know it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Awesome. So you guys, your ministry journey, if I'm hearing right, you started with it started in Patia with working with uh, teams, distributing Bibles, working with those who are in uh, trafficking type situations, helping people get out of that. And now you've transitioned to a place where you're uh, working at a school. Um, let me just clarify this. You, you both are volunteers uh, on staff at that school, right? That's correct. All right. All right. I'm currently on sabbatical. I'm not sure what the future holds for me. I've spent, um, I didn't, I, my journey to the school was a little more organic. I continued doing what I normally do, which is just networking and connecting and finding people who need help and help them out in whatever that looks like. Um, eventually that wound up, the school needed a lot of help. Um, they had to transition from the one campus to an interim campus while they built a new campus. Right. 
And so I became the facilities director for the school during that time, which was uh, pretty stressful. There was a, yeah. a lot going on. So, and hence the uh, sabbatical now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. And the extended sabbatical, thanks to. <laughs> it is now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's transition again. Um, I don't. I'm not trying to you know rush through this quick, but I, it just kind of seems to flow. But let's let's talk about some challenges that you guys face as. You know, folks that have been on the mission field for 10 plus years now. Uh, I mean, we could probably rewind in, in different seasons of ministry. You face different challenges. But, but let's talk about this current season right now. What's, what's uh, three or four challenges that you face that uh, maybe we as Coastal Oaks Church could join you in praying, praying about or could come alongside you and, you know, help you solve a problem uh, maybe per se. So, Right. You want to jump in on that one, Michelle? Um. Well, our number one challenge every year um, is getting another visa for the next year. That mm. is any case for any expat living in any country. Um, in Thailand, I don't know if it's worse than other places because I've never been to other places to do a visa, but um, it seems like the law changed quite often from one year to the next. So um, luckily, the school has a great visa office and they help all their staff with all that. But um, even just um, in this COVID situation that we're in right now with Kevin there, there's several of our staff members where the, the wife or the husband is here and the other half of their family and dependents are even in America. And mm -hmm. so they don't know if they're gonna get back here in time, but our peace office is doing all they can to make all that happen. We have a lot of new teachers coming in this year that are probably gonna miss the first part of the school year because of it. But um, so I would say visa and not just because of COVID, but every year the visa is always a prayer point because um, at any point, um, there's a hundred and right about a hundred staff that need a visa to work at Grace and even on a volunteer, volunteer uh, basis. And so every year our visa office is trying to process all those and at any time the Thai government can just say, no, we're not going to renew your visas and then the school has to close. So a visa, living in another country, visa, people that um, have not lived or worked or served in another country don't realize there's a lot of governmental issues that you have to work through hoops you might say yeah and that's just step one right then, yeah. and there's every three months you have to go do other things and yeah it's it, the bureauc bureaucratic part is very strong <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yep. Okay. So what's, an, what's another challenge you guys face? Well, let me ask you a different question. Let's talk about the target. You guys are on staff at Grace International School. What is Grace International School's mission or vision? What, what's the work that's going on there? I mean, it's, it's more than just your typical high school, right? I mean, there's, there's something oh, else. Definitely more than typical. Yeah, um, so let's take a minute and talk have, about that. Um, 85 to 90% of the students at Grace, and there are about – um, I think 550, 560 students this coming up year, and um, 85, 90% of them are missionary kids. Um, their parents serve here, um, or some of them are live in dorms, so they serve other places. Um, this, like Kevin said earlier, Chiang Mai is a jumping off point for that 1040 window, so there's a lot of mission organizations have their home base here, and Grace started 20 years ago because they realized there was a lot of organizations and not a lot of schooling options for their children. So, um, so Grace filled that hole that it needed. And um, it started out with five major organizations and now we have over a hundred, I think nice. that are involved with Grace. And uh, I think, oh gosh, I don't know how many, it's like 24 different nationalities of people and they're yeah. serving in 30 some odd countries. Wow. So it's a great, it's, it's a melting pot of missionaries wow. <laughs> early. And, um, yeah. and my job is to obviously work in the office and keep the office running and stuff. But um, I, one of them, my main purpose there as a mission is to serve the parents because not all of them are Christian missionaries and to serve the, the teachers. We have a lot of young teachers and a lot of, you know, little missionary kids that come back to teach, but um they to keep them in the field to keep our calling of help missionaries stay in the field missionary to missionaries um i think that's my main focus is to um 
make things run smoothly for everybody. Yeah. Uh, keep the communication lines open between the parents and the school and to show love, the love of God anywhere. All the, you know, the parents, um, even the kids, missionary kids aren't all Christians just because they're missionary kid. Right. You know, right. so, um, yeah. So you guys went from being the, the missionaries in the field to now you're in more of a role where you're trying to help missionaries stay in the field. Uh, right. through, yeah. through uh, you know, providing a school environment that uh, is something that they feel comfortable, you know, leaving right. the kids and going off and mm-hmm. doing the work. And I know right. some people are still working there in the area, but yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, that was our calling when we left the IMB uh, was to be missionaries to missionaries. And then we did that on a small scale in Pachia. But then uh, when we moved to Chiang Mai, it just jumped to a huge scale there. So, yeah, definitely. So, okay, let's transition back to challenges then. We talked about the challenge of visas. Any other challenges that uh, that you think we as a church should be aware of? Or, um, you know, just uh, I, I, I hesitate to spend a lot of time talking about challenges, but it kind of helps. Uh, I think it helps our church get to um, understand the fact that missionary life is, is different than, you know, what we live here. And so that's kind of what, I, what I'm thinking about. You know, I, I've lived in Texas my whole life. Not one day have, have, I, have I ever had to worry about somebody coming to kick me out because I didn't have a visa. So, um, you know, so those, those type of things I think are important. So um, I don't know, can you guys think of any other challenges that you face as, as uh, those who have been on the field for about 10 years now? Well, uh, one of the challenges is just staying in the field. Um, uh, the, you know, the uh, average uh, career missionary is only 10 years now. Mm. So we're, uh, you guys we're, are like grandparents. We're not average. <laughs> <laughs> We've never been average. <laughs> That's right. yeah. So um, we, we're, we're definitely abnormal. Yeah. So um, anyway, so yeah, it's just difficult to stay in the field because uh, you're constantly dealing with, um, you know, different culture. Um, and even though you get used to it, it's still some days it's difficult to, uh, to say, wow, really again. (laughs) And then, um, I would say another challenge that we face, uh, and it's been through the years is just, uh, staying connected, um, to, to our churches and to our supporters. Um, we're really, really blessed. Um, most of the people that we know have anywhere from 80 to over a hundred supporters. Um, we're blessed in that we really honestly have less than 20, I think, including our churches and stuff like that. God really takes care of us with just a smaller amount of people, uh, and, and churches. So, um, but so we're blessed in that way, but it would really be helpful if uh, communications could roll both ways uh, more often. Ooh, okay. um, and if, you know, I'm not saying we need a, a phone call once a week or something like <laughs> that to pat us on the back, but, you know, just kind of letting us know that, that we aren't out of sight, out of mind. Right. Um, both and, of you guys are on Facebook, right? So yes. is, I'll, I'll drop a, a, a link to both of your profiles in the, description of this video so that folks can connect with you. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to post this video just yet, but I can certainly see it on being on Facebook, being on YouTube. So, um, but yeah, I, I can totally get that. Yeah. Staying connected has got to be difficult, uh, in a culture, in another culture anyway. So yeah. Right. What else? What are, what are some other challenges that you, that you face? Honestly, for me, one of the biggest challenges that I've had the whole time, and I think Michelle might be agreed to this, but um, <laughs> accountability, That's accountability right. partner, um, because of the changeover in the field all the time, it's very difficult to find a, an accountability partner or even mentors mm-hmm. um, to be able to help us in our growth. Um, I, I usually wind up having to reach back to the mentors and, and accountability partners that I had back here when things really get sideways and I'm just like, I got to talk, I got to, I got to get to get this out. Um, on, I think I've had two accountability partners in going on what 11 years. So, um, going on 12. And so, yeah, and, and they were short, they didn't last very long, like three to six months and they moved on to another position. And so, yeah, those, uh, for me, that's one of my biggest challenges. Okay. That's understandable. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would, I'm encouraged to hear that because, you know, as somebody who's in ministry myself, different ministry, but 
still in ministry, still trying to, you know, champion the cause of Christ and take the gospel to the nations, uh, just in a different context here in the local church. Um, I'm encouraged to hear that you guys as missionaries feel the, feel, feel called to, um, you know, have that, uh, accountability that regular investment of accountability in your life that's sure. that's good that's yeah. a good reminder for yeah. for all of us really <laughs> yeah absolutely what about you michelle you got can you think of anything else um i, I one of our challenges i get okay um i guess i could say one of our challenges is um we have to monitor or we feel like i guess i should say we feel like we need to monitor anything we put out there on social media mm -hmm. um years ago we were criticized for showing pictures of us at a waterfall because mm -hmm. we were on vacation and we weren't on vacation we were down our down this road a couple miles <laughs> but um it's, okay it's hard you know Yes, we're missionaries. We're not missionaries 24 seven. Right. We have kids. We need to take a break. We need to go on vacations. And sometimes we get criticized if we don't post up, you know, 80 ministry pictures and we post 10 vacation pictures right. or whatever. It's, it's, um, it's hard to find that balance. And it's hard to explain to people like, hey, we have not been on a family vacation in uh 16 years <laughs> <laughs> wow. no. No. okay maybe maybe what well now we just went on one so we can't say that right but, but before, before that, then it was before that it was 2012 so eight years yeah 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 and we were told that we should try and get away one weekend a month and i think we get away one weekend a year yeah 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 that's uh that that's uh and that's and that's partially our fault partially financial, you know, we have, right. we have things we need to do with our money. We can't just say, we're not going to pay that bill or pay the rent this month. Cause we're going to go away for a weekend. Right. But, um, it's, you know, it's all choices. And I know not everybody can afford a vacation every year, but, yeah. um, it would be nice not to be criticized for when we do. That's right. I can understand. <laughs> that. Yeah. I mean, in, in reality, rest and relaxation. I mean, you go back to scripture, the Sabbath, I mean, that was built in. God built that in from, the, you know, the beginning of the of Scripture yeah. in Genesis. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I, I think that's kind of strange that you, you you would receive that criticism. But I can understand how that might seem unfair, might uh, might hurt a little bit even. Yeah. So, yeah, we can certainly, uh, I think that we as a church uh, can certainly let you off the hook a little bit on that. <laughs> go, go take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need one now. We took a nice one. We sold our house. Good, good, good. I'm I'm glad for that. So yeah, post all the waterfall pictures. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, so just one more question because I think I'm about to run out of time on my recording here. But um, just one more question for tonight. How can we as a church support and pray for the Kennedys in Thailand? Now I, I want to point out, I'll, and I'll throw this out there. You know, to start with, we've said it. I think twice in this video, but I want to point this out to our people, uh, specifically our Coastal Oaks people, but anybody else really that, that could come along uh, uh, beside you guys as financial supporters. But I want to point out that you have both said that you're volunteers on staff at, at Grace International School. That's right. That's correct. So, um, so finances has got to be some, uh, you know, part of the equation here. The one way that churches, our church or other churches could come along and support the, the work that God's called you to in, in Thailand, right? Yes, for sure. Um, the number one way we always say, though, is still prayer, because mm -hmm. prayer aligns our hearts with uh, what God's already doing, uh, and he also aligns the hearts of those who pray. If they're supposed to uh, be a part of the financial process with us, then them praying will hopefully uh, prompt them in whatever way the Lord needs them. Um, we haven't really mentioned it yet, but um, when we came back independently, uh, we felt led to just come back on the power of prayer. So we don't do fundraising, we do prayer raising. So, um, and the Lord's been faithful for nine years now, almost nine years, uh, just doing it off of prayer. And we're really, really blessed to, to do that. And that's not bragging on us, that's bragging on the Lord. Because sure. uh, for sure, He has answered those prayers so many times. 
Um, our kids could tell story after story about how we were down to a dollar in the account for two weeks and we got a bill coming next week and we needed to pray and we pray that night and before the morning the money is there almost to the dime uh, and so you just time after time God is always taking care of us so number one way is prayer and then uh, doing whatever the Lord prompts you to do inside that prayer uh, is the number one thing we can do um, right now missionaries around the globe are hurting along with the, the families mm -hmm. around the globe too financially uh, we know missionaries that are leaving the field right now because they don't have the finances to stay and um, some of that is was already in a not a great situation before COVID hit, but now the COVID has hit, um, the financial hit has been pretty severe. Our yeah. giving last month was less than half normal. Right. So. Yeah, and just for our Coastal Oaks Church folks, we, we support you guys through our annual budget, which we're about to go into a new phase of an annual budget, but the, you guys get a percentage of our receipts. So if our giving is up, then you get more, but if our giving is down, then you get less. And I'm encouraged to hear you say that, you know, God's been faithful to provide. Um, but at the same time, I just want to make sure that our people kind of understand how that, you know, that process works. I don't know. It's different, I guess, for other churches, maybe they give flat amounts or whatnot. So, yeah, it is. Like you said, it's different for each church. We have some churches that give once a year. I think we still have that. And then uh, we have some that give a set amount once a month. And then uh, Coastal gives a percentage, like you said. Every month, yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Okay, so what we'll do, um, the, the two ways that, that we can, uh, you know, support and pray for the Kennedys. I, I'm not sure. Is there anything else that we could do to possibly uh, come alongside you, partner with you, uh, you know, as a church, uh, make sure that we're encouraging and uplifting the, the work of the kingdom that you guys are doing in, in Thailand? I don't know. Help me. I can think of one thing the church can do. All right. Let us have it. Send a team. Plan on sending oh, teams over. Nice. All we right. Have, there are a multitude of different kinds of ministries here that we can introduce them to. And, um, you know, we came to the mission field because I was touched through a mission trip. Celeste Rowan is here because she was touched through a mission trip. Um, that's how we get missionaries in the field is you have to go and see what it's all about. And sometimes it's not for you. Sometimes you come and you're a blessing to others, but most of the time you'll be blessed yourself. And um, it's always nice to get a piece of home. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. So uh, you heard it, Coastal Oaks family. Uh, sounds like we need to start praying about possibly heading to Thailand for a trip. So uh, we'll see what we can do about that. So. All right. Well, I just got a notification on my end, guys. It says I am running out of time. Yeah. Uh, I want to want to thank you guys. Thank Kevin and Michelle for uh, taking some time out to join us, to give us a little bit of insight into the life of someone that's served on the field for going on a decade now and uh, give us a little bit of a glimpse into the work that they're called to, how the Lord's provided, how we as a church can partner with them. So I'm going to leave some links, probably several links in the description of this video, uh, about how you can um, send prayer needs to them. I'll get that information from you guys here in just a bit. Um, and uh, how also, if you feel led to partner with them, how you can send financial support to the Kennedys in Thailand um, through some secure processes and help the work continue there. So um, thanks again, Kevin and Michelle. Appreciate your time tonight. But uh, we're going to probably have to wrap it up here pretty soon, if that's all right with you guys. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Sandy, for taking the time to do this. We appreciate yeah, it very much. Yeah, most definitely. We, we love you guys, and uh, we'll just pray that uh, the Lord will continue to use you for as many days as he's given you, and that yes, the sir. work in your hands will be fruitful, and you'll be able to get adequate rest in between, and that the gospel will grow deep roots there in, in Chiang Mai where you guys are working. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. See you guys later.